Hi, um, I'm going to start with a couple of prefatory remarks before I get on to the review. Um, in the review of William Friedkin's Sorcerer, which I'll be posting at the weekend, I mentioned there's a whole series of uh, videos that I'm about to shoot, um, partly so that I've got some in the bag. This is actually one of those videos that I mentioned there. Now, had I thought um, more carefully, obviously, I would have put the preface to that video on this one and, um, you know, got, got that out of the way sooner, but I didn't actually realise that I would be posting this one first. The reason I'm posting this one first is because this is a film which is currently out in general release and I suspect won't be in cinemas terribly long and it, it's only only going to be in uh, art house cinemas on the whole anyway so I kind of really want to get the review out while it's still there and while you still have the opportunity to, to see it there um, although you'll be able to pick it up on, on streaming services and, and DVD fairly, fairly soon as well um, whereas Sorcerer currently isn't out on, on, on general release I believe there will be, um, there's going to be a new DVD version available in the UK, a uh, DVD Blu-ray, and uh, I think they're hoping for a, a limited uh, cinematic release of Sorcerer. Um, that's going to be in, in the new year in the UK, so that one is, is less urgent to, to get out now. I've... As I say, I've already filmed the source review. I've already uh, videoed another uh, review of a book. There are at least uh, two more, possibly three more reviews to to come this week, uh, which I'll, I'll try to get out of the way. None of them are massively urgent, although I'll have to look. I mean, some of them are. It, it would be nice to get out close to the, the, the event, close to the thing being being in place. But since I'm going to be posting this one sometime, I think, mid midweek, hopefully, uh, Tuesday or Thursday this week, and then Sorcerer on Saturday or Sunday. Uh, and since the intention is for these to be every fortnight, uh, I, I may have to think about, about scheduling, I may have to actually spend a, a, a short period doing things weekly um, just, to, just to clear um, the backlog, although I do want uh, one or two in reserve just to make sure that I have enough to keep ticking over. Okay, enough uh, of, of that preliminary. Uh, the other preparatory comment that I wanted to make is you may notice a slight difference in the lighting. I've been so far relying on natural light. That's a little restricted. It means I can only really shoot uh, during daylight hours when the weather, when the light is decent outside, which is a problem. It's, it's particularly a problem coming into autumn uh, through winter and uh, in, in the first part of spring. But even, even in summer, it means that I'm essentially restricted to when I'm on holiday and, and weekends um, for, for shooting these, these videos. So I'm, I'm trying out uh, a lighting source. I'm, I think it's okay. I might modify it over, over the coming weeks, but we'll, we'll see. So uh, hopefully that will work. Right. Throat clearing out of the way, and let's let's press on. Imagine a documentary film that, well, isn't much of a documentary. It it's kind of non-fiction. It is based on historic events. It does retrace them and tell you something about the. The subject it was a film, but maybe is isn't quite a conventional documentary. The film I'm talking about is Andrew Cotting's By Ourselves. This is a film uh, by Andrew Cotting and 
with Ian Sinclair, uh, which follows uh, the journey of, of John Clare when he absconded from an asylum in Epping and made the journey of 80 miles if you believe the film, or 80 plus miles if you believe the film, 90 miles if you just believe Wikipedia, uh, back home to Northampton. John Clare is a romantic period, he was born in the 18th century and died in the 19th century. He stands really somewhat apart from the other romantic poets. He's not quite political in the same sense, although he shares some of their concerns. He's, I believe, was politically uh, much more conservative on the whole, certainly than the second generation of romantic poets. Uh, and he spent much of his life in an asylum. He experienced depression as well as and apparently other mental health problems. Um, he seems to have, have suffered from uh, various delusions and, and paranoias. He, as I said, he spent a significant amount of his life in an, in an asylum. The structure of the film essentially is that uh, Andrew Cotting and Ian Sinclair, along with Toby Jones, playing uh, the young, or well, youngish, uh, John Clare, make the journey from Epping to Northampton, uh, following in his footsteps as, as, as best they can. Um, there are also inserts where Toby Jones' father, Freddie Jones, who played John Clare in, in a, a 70s uh, TV programme about, about the poet, also reads uh, from John Clare's journal and from his poems. And along the way they meet and talk to various people who are either experts on Clare or who have uh, strong opinions about Clare or, or are knowledgeable about the areas that they're passing through. Uh, and there's a, a sort of elision or, or, or a collision yeah, collision, um, between uh, the past and the present, between 1841, I believe it was, when um, John Clare made his journey, and, and the present day. So we were introduced to John Clare walking in, in Woodland, in, in Epping, uh, with a, a, a title telling us that it's 1841. Quite obviously the clothes he's wearing are... Uh, anachronistic, they're, they're not wholly in keeping with the period, and there's no real pretense at, at, at costume or at actually being within the period. Um, vans at different points stand in for cards, um, and there's, there's no attempt to hide that the places have changed, that this is a modern Britain, this is a, a a place of, of roads designed now for cars. This is not somewhere where you, you walk or, or, or drive or drive carts anymore. And it's again a place where communities are different, the spaces, public spaces and the way they're used are different, and the spaces between settlements are very different. Unlike in Cotting's earlier documentary, Gallivant, where he toured around the UK, um, there he isn't as present, or, or as obviously present. He doesn't seem to provide anything in the way of a, a voiceover. The voices mostly are from uh, Freddie Jones, they're from uh, Ian Sinclair also reading from the journals and the poetry. Uh, there are some voices from the, uh, the programme about John Clare that Freddie Jones appeared in. And um, Andrew Cotting appears mostly, mostly silent as uh, Straw Bear.
I said this wasn't much like a conventional documentary, and it, it really isn't. You don't have a lot of talking heads. You do have opinions from two or three people uh, throughout who, who shed some light on his poetry. Uh, one, for instance, talks about uh, particularly his uh, poems that I think he wrote in an asylum, uh, in including sort of famous works like I Am, but also his rewriting of uh, Byron's Don Juan, uh, and, and, which he rewrote in a very misogynist and, uh, and obscene way, and, and deliberately so. It was a satirical uh, attack, and it was an, an attack on, on poetry and, and publishing of poetry and the audience for, for poetry. But we're never given a, a kind of linear timeline, we're never given any background to much to why he was in the asylum. We're not given a lot of background other than in, in the titles as to why he was walking to Northumberland. He was walking there because he believed he was going to meet his, his first love, who he believed was his first wife, uh, a woman called Mary. And apparently, I don't think this is mentioned in the film, but when he arrived there, her family struggled to get him to accept that she had died three years previously, I think in a, I think in a fire. So that, that was why he was making the journey. He was, as it happens already, married. He, he, he did have um, a wife, uh, but he, he was going to see his, his first wife. And his journal and, and his other, other writings do mention that he'd be, or, or at least imply that he was, he did believe he was married to, to both his, his first and his, and his uh, second wife. Apologies, this is uh, this is really really choppy. I keep I keep sort of having to stop and and gather my thoughts. I'm not stopping the camera. I'm just keeping going because otherwise I have to sort of start over from the beginning and it gets very tiresome. It's because I haven't done a huge amount of preparation and I only saw the film last night, so I, I haven't. Although I was really impressed with it, I haven't processed it quite as much as I'd like. Anyway, I was talking about how this isn't particularly uh, much of a conventional documentary. Um, so it, it's not a talking head. It's not really a dramatisation, even though we have Toby Jones reenacting much of the journey. There's not really a great deal of, of, of pretense that this is how it was. That, there's some slight recreation, but they, they, they even make a, a joke of it. They, there's a, a scene where Toby Jones is lying uh, under a bridge, and there's a discussion, I think, between Andrew Cotting and, and someone else. And they're, they're talking about how when they were filming this, there were some, some kids walking past uh, and, and discussing it and, and saying... Uh, I think one of them was, was saying, get up, another one was saying, I think he's dead, and another one, <laughs> the, the, the third saying, this is, it's a recreation, but it's in the wrong place. Uh, and, and and then cutting or whatever it is, recounting this, going on to say this is, that they, they probably hit the nail on the head with that. Um, so the, the, the journey is, is told in in Claire's words from his journals, very often in passages that will be read uh, at least twice, um, one after the other by Freddie Jones and by Ian Sinclair. Freddie Jones, wherever he's reading his, and Ian Sinclair uh, on the spot, or on, on the spot where they've chosen to film near to where things happened. Um, as I said, there's not a great deal of attempt, a great deal of an attempt to give you much context about about Claire, about the asylum, about his mental health problems, 
about his poetry particularly or about the state of, uh, of England. There are a lot of uh, ideas thrown out, there's a lot of interesting threads and, and to me it, it feels like it feels like a filmic version very much of a lot of Ian Sinclair's writing, although slightly less um, overripe. I, I, I like Ian Sinclair, but I, I think you know some people can find it, it quite difficult, and I can see why. Um, this feels sort of slightly sparser because that, that sort of series of, of sunbursts of, of different connections which may or may not be significant, they may be purely coincidental, but they're, they're, they're thrown out like, like confetti. They're very much reduced down because it's, it's film, it's, it's, a, it's a different medium. You, you have these, these ideas which are there, but you also have things happening visually, the film primarily is in black and white, there are colour sequences, there are also things happening in terms of, of sound and there are very much uh, Andrew Cossing's ideas um, and the kind of things that you, that you will see in his films. So for instance some of the colour sections uh, feature Andrew Cossing's daughter Eden who is, is dressed as, as Dorothy and who, who apparently also provided the, the, the handwritten titles for the, for the film and, and so the role that she plays within the film or in relation to, to John Clare or, or the process of, of making the film is, is a little obscure, it may be, may be non-existent. Um, I don't think it I don't think it detracts from the film, I don't think it detracts from those sections at all. I don't think it matters. I like the idea of having different elements where it's not necessarily clear what what purpose they serve or how they, they fit into the overall scheme, uh, as long as they, they do seem to fit. And, and, and for me, the, the, those sections do, they don't, they don't stand out or, 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 or sort of make seem seem pointless in, in, in any way. Um, so so that that's that's sort of an example of, of Andrew Cossing's voice coming through. So you've got what is still a very rich piece, um, but it, it's with some characteristic Ian Sinclair uh, connections, but not quite as uh, so sort of full on and, and, and relentless as it usually is in his in his writing. Um, I mean, you, you could perhaps say that this is something like a film essay, but really it isn't. There's not, there isn't a, 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 a central argument in, in, in particularly. There's not even a, a kind of series of connected discussions, you know, that this is not, uh, it's, it's not Chris Marker or in a kind of more contemporary um, in, in a kind of TV based medium, it's not, um, it, it's not someone being purposely tendentious in, in, in the way that uh, Adam Curtis or, or Jonathan Meads are. So it, it's not necessarily trying to provoke you to to argue with it or to or to question the conclusions because there aren't particularly any conclusions there are uh, uh, kind of statements and there are there are uh, assumptions but there's no sort of positive this is exactly how it was so it's it's more like it's more like you're presented with a lot of different information and expected to to do your own research to dig into dig into the poet dig into the place dig into the time uh, to 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 find out more it's it's a great film to uh, go to with um, 
with, 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 with your smartphone. Keep it off during the film, enjoy the film, and as soon as you get out, uh, fire it up and, and, and get on Wikipedia, or you know, wait till you get home and, 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 and do the same, and, and start you know, tracking down the poems, finding out about about all the, the various bits and pieces around uh, John Clare. It's it's. I felt it was more like um, more than a documentary. It's like kind of um, carnival or festival or like a, a, a kind of mummer's play. There, there are certainly uh, there's, there's certainly a sequence whether it's a, a, a mummer's or Morris dancing. It's 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 that kind of uh, country tradition which was most likely revived in the in the nineteenth century or, or invented out of whole cloth in the nineteenth century. Um, that's that's most of the way through the title. So it's, it's worth if you go to the cinema waiting waiting through the titles to to see everything that the film actually has for you. Um, so it, it felt more like. So a kind of anarchic, world turned upside down sort of project, which I think reflects where it came from. I believe it was a, a, a an art event. It was, I mean, it seems to have been a sort of series of, of semi recreations of retracing this route. Uh, whether there was, I, I think there may have been film and other elements involved. I believe the film was kind of an afterthought. They gathered a lot of material and, and quite late in the process decided to make a, uh, to make a film of it and I believe money was raised uh, through through Kickstarter. Um, so it, 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 it apparently must be quite a quite a low budget and I guess I, I guess you can tell although it doesn't massively show in the uh, cinematography particularly or, or in the sound. Um, I, I like the cinematography. There's, there's some very interesting uh, shots where the camera raises quite high and, and where it turns upside down, where it, it sort of describes an arc, uh, where it, it, it rises and, and comes down. Uh, I'm not clear how those shots were achieved. They don't all seem to have been done with a crane, and unless I've, I've been I've been conned by the magic of cinema, it, it might be that, that there was a drone used. I, I really honestly couldn't say. There was something mentioned on on the credits, but it didn't really give you much of a clue as to what the actual process was. Uh, the sound I I really enjoy. Uh, there's. There's a combination of, of sort of the, the, the natural atmospheric sounds of, of spaces which will sometimes drop out. Uh, quite often the sound will be processed, so particular sounds will be exaggerated or layered up or become very loud, uh, while others are, 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 are pushed to one side. And sound is very much made a part of the film. You see the sound guy a lot. There's a sequence of him walking with his with his boom with the mic on top towards uh, a group of three uh, wind turbines. Now, whether the sound of the wind turbines that you hear is actually what he was recording if he was recording uh, during that scene, um, or, or whether it's something that's been sort of faked up afterwards, I'm, I'm not clear. There seems to be a very distinct uh, whoosh sound as one of the turbine blades, uh, or, or as yeah, any one of the turbine blades passes at a certain point, which might indicate that it's the actual recording or it might not. Uh, and again, where there are interviews, very often the mic will be 
clearly being held by one of the participants or by the uh, by the sound guy. Um, Alan Moore uh, turns up in it. I hadn't expected him. I hadn't really read a great deal about the film. He turns up talking about Northampton and about uh, John Clare, but mo mostly about about Northampton. Um, to be honest, the, the the scene with him was one of the few moments. Although it was interesting and it was. Uh, it told me things that I didn't know, and there were some provocative and interesting ideas. It was one of the few moments where I thought, this might put people off. Not because it's Alan Moore, I, I think Alan Moore is a, a, a brilliant writer, and, and I'm, I'm always glad to, glad to see him. It was because it suddenly felt that there, there was... You had a sound guy there, you were aware that this was an Andrew Cossing film, uh, he was being interviewed, I think, by uh, Ian, Ian Sinclair, and suddenly had a sense that this was a very, a very white and a very male film. Now, I mean, you could argue. I mean, certainly, there's, there, there perhaps wasn't a great deal that could have been done about the, the predominant whiteness of it. We're talking, after all, about a, a, a white man in 1840 in the middle of England. Um, but it, 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 it was one moment where it just felt like a lot of middle-aged and, and older blokes sitting around talking about middle-aged blokes and I, I could see people looking at that and thinking oh, this, this, this doesn't speak to me this is this is of no no interest to me but I think on the whole the the sort of energy of the film the different things that happen and and and, and the, the the way that it, it's it's restless and it doesn't it, and it, and it's not a conventional documentary. It's not a conventional essay film. It is something more uh, carnivalesque. I think some of that carries it along, and and at, at different points there is this this kind of retinue of of, of characters who who follow or or, or crop up and encounter. John Clare uh, along the route. Anyway, I'm, I'm not sure that I have a great deal more to say about the film. I may do in a, in a week or so's time or, or a month or so's time and if something revelatory occurs to me then clearly I'll, I'll come back and I'll, and I'll revisit it. But uh, for the moment I, I would highly recommend it but you know, be aware that if you're a bit, uh, if, if you're a bit weary of, of, of middle-aged blokes talking about middle-aged white blokes, um, then it, it, it may test your patience. If you don't like Ian Sinclair or, or Andrew Cotting, or if you, if you haven't liked their previous projects, then clearly you're, you're probably onto, onto a bit of a, a loser. But, but um, I, I, would, I would still suggest maybe Maybe, maybe have a look, see if you can uh, get something from it. And if you don't feel like it, then you know, go ahead and, and, and find out about, about John Clare, find out how he fits into, in, 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 into the Romantic Poets, find out uh, what he was like as a person, find out more about the period. Uh, and, and particularly, it, it's, it's interesting to read about his uh, rewritings of of uh, Byron and, and, and others, and, and particularly things like, like, like Don Juan where he uh, is, is really quite um, scandalous, I mean not just linguistically, there, there, are, there are some puns on, on, on cunt uh, in, in there, and, and there are really quite scandalous, I, I mean at the, at the time they probably would have been treasonous. Uh, Mm, not allegations, but at, uh, at least suggestions about uh, Queen Victoria. 
it, it, it really was um, sort of quite scandalous. So, so that 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 uh, aspect of, of what he was doing is, is is quite interesting. So if if you don't fancy the film, I, I would certainly recommend uh, reading about about John Clare and and about the works that he wrote uh, while he was uh, in in the asylum. Uh, that's that's it for now. As I say, the next video will be the review of uh, William Friedkin's Sorcerer, which I was originally planning to uh, release before this. Uh, there's another one already in the bag, and there'll be another two or three uh, that will be shot later this week, which will, which will be appearing uh, at some point, and hopefully there's quite a lot of events coming up uh, over the next the next month or so, which should keep me busy and should should uh, mean that I, I, I've got a couple in hand uh, in, in case I have a, a, a lazy week or two and, and can't be asked to, to go out or, or review anything. Um, so yeah, um, see you next time.